Hey everyone, I'm Julian of Julian Creates, and welcome to the Soul Along for Know Me ME 2018, which is my early spring pattern, which is four different views. Um, you have two different styles of shirts, which are Italian's uh, collar shirts, both short sleeve and long sleeve, as well as high-waisted pants. Today, we'll be doing view A, which is the long sleeve shirt. Coming about this pattern, I was really thinking around like mid-century, mid-20th century fashion. So 1950s, 1960s um, men's sportswear, especially American style men's sportswear, where you saw um, strong shoulders, but a really elegant fit, even in your casual styles. You saw a lot of different things that we normally don't see in clothes wear today, such as um, convertible collars, Italian style collars, different things like that. So I'm really excited to bring these vintage elements into patterns today. So let's get started. So for view A, you will need piece one, which is the shirt front. You'll cut two. You'll need piece two, which is the shirt back. You'll cut one on the fold. You'll need piece three, which is the yoke back. You'll cut two. You'll need piece four which is the front facing. You'll cut two of these in the contrasting fabric as well as interfacing. You'll need piece five, which is your sleeve. You'll cut two. You'll need piece six, which is your placket. You'll cut two of your contrasting fabric. You'll need piece seven, which is your cuff. You'll cut four of your contrasting fabric plus two of interfacing. And you'll also need piece eight, which is just the guide for your buttonholes. Now, if you are doing view B, the changes that you will make to get the short sleeve option is you'll make two piece five, which is your sleeve. You'll cut here at this line here that says cut for view B. You will also need piece nine, which is your sleeve band. Go ahead and cut those out of your fabrics as well as cut your interfacing. Make sure that you mark your notches as well as dots. And then you can meet me at the sewing machine so we can get started. So I decided to have a little fun with my sewing project this time. So not only am I just using any sewing machine, I'm using one of my favorite vintage sewing machines. This is a, what is called a Singer 15 clone. Um, this one was sold by the Happy Company, which is a Japanese brand, probably some around, sometime around the late 40s into the 60s. Um, this was sold by Montgomery Ward. This is also kind of the machine that really helped me learn how to sew. So this is one of my favorite machines. And because I'm working on a vintage inspired pattern, I said, let me pull out one of my vintage machines. This is just a straight stitch. Um, and I'm going to do most of the shirt on this machine. I will also probably use my serger to clean up the inside edges along the fabric, but you can use whatever you got. So let's get started. So I have all my fabrics cut out. For my shirt, I'll be using this crisp striped Italian cotton um, shirting as well as a white cotton as my contrast, um, giving me a really nice spring summer shirt. To get us started, what we're gonna do is we're going to reinforce at this top dot. So we will sew five eighths of an inch to the dot and then five eighths of an inch down the side, as well as sew the back next thing together. 
right up top matching our notches and we're going to sew at five eighths of an inch seam allowance using a straight stitch um, for most of this project you'll use a regular straight stitch as this is woven um, you can also use a serger to help finish your edges um, but that is up to you so i'll take this over to the machine and reinforce those edges and sew this up So now that I have gone and reinforced these corners as well as sewed up the back seam, I went ahead and clipped to the dot, but not through that stitching line. So I did that on either side. And we can go ahead and set this piece to the side as we begin to work on the back. Now, if you are a person that likes to batch sew, you can also go ahead and start on step nine, which is working on piece four, which are the facings. For the facings, we're basically doing the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and reinforce this edge and sew up this back seam. I also went ahead and hemmed the non-notched edge of the facing. For this, I just uh, used my serger. Then I folded it back and top stitched it down. I will then go ahead and clip this corner all the way to the dot as well, making sure not to go through that stitching. Once you've done those two things, we'll go ahead and start on the back piece. All right, so we're now gonna start on the back. So we're gonna take piece two and where we made um, the marks for our pleats in the back, we are going to put in those pleats. So I have made small little clips into the fabric of my garment We're going to take the one pleat. We're going to fold it and make it match to the next, uh, to the one over. So we're going to make sure that our pleats are going towards the side seams. Okay. So the pleats are not going to go in. They're going to go out. We're going to then take that over to our iron. We're going to press that. And then we're just going to baste across the top um, to hold those pleats in place and do that on both sides of your back. So once you have gone ahead and um, basted your back in place, what I do is I go ahead and lay it on top of one of my number three or my yoke pieces. So these are right sides together. Where we will then match up notches at the top I then take another one of my yoke pieces and I sandwich the back. So we have right sides together this way. So we have the first yoke piece right side up. The back is right side down. So those two right sides together. This is wrong side of the back piece up with then the right side of this last yoke piece down facing the back piece. We will then go ahead, pin this together and sew across the top edge at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So now that our back is all nice and pressed and I've pressed both of my yokes up, I am going to meander a little bit off of the instructions. Um, to show you another method of how to put the shirt together using um, normally what you see in a lot of other men's shirt making patterns. So um, if you're following the pattern, what it tells you to do here is we're going to attach the front, of course, to the back, but they would have you press down um, the seam allowance for the internal yoke um, so that it can all be kind of installed together and there will be some hand sewing involved. I've kind of figured out a way that we can get around that. So what we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and take the internal yoke and just fold that down for right now. And we're just going to work on the, um, the back piece, the outside back piece. So with that, I am then going to take 
my front and we're going to put it on top of the back. Now remember, in looking at this, it looks a little weird. So to reorient yourself with the front piece, what you're basically doing is, is that this outside edge here, that is your actual collar um, making, like goes into your collar into the edge of your shirt. So this part down here is the outer edge of your collar. So we're gonna kind of turn it upside down on top of our yoke piece, matching up our squares at our, our dot. So we're going to take this edge, which will be your shoulder seam, matching shoulder to shoulder at the notch. We're gonna take that all the way to the edge here. So this edge where we have clipped should match up to the dot on the yoke. So once you get to that dot, we are going to pivot, matching up the rest of the neckline along all of the, um, the notches. Keep on going around on this side to the dot as well. all the way to the end of the shoulder seam. So I'm going to pin this up, sew it, and then I'll be right back. All right, so looking at one of the shoulders, you can see that we have the shoulder to the front and it makes this interesting um, angle right here going into what would end up being the collar. On the inside, I went ahead and used some pinking shears and just trimmed down the seam allowance. And you can really see the importance of um, pivoting right at that dot and where you made that X here. Helps it gives you a nice, um, a nice flat intersection on the outside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with the facing on the other yoke. And I will show you how that kind of goes together now. It's a little bit different. All right, so I went ahead and pinned this on like we did um, the fronts and so that we can get the same corners. What we're gonna do here though, is we're going to baste to here and this we will sew down and then baste to here. All the rest of the shoulder seam and everything like that, we're gonna put it together similar to a regular burrito method. And I'll show you that in a bit. So once the facing is attached to the inner yoke piece, what we're gonna now do is we're going to burrito to sew the collar piece together first, okay? So we're gonna sew this edge. So what we're trying to do now is bring, kind of start rolling all of this up with the front piece until you get to this one and you can match them together matching all of your notches and your dots all along the edge. And then we'll take it to our machine and sew this at 
5 eighths of an inch. So once stitching the collar facing and the collar along the edges and all the way down the front of the shirt, what I did was I went ahead and um, took my picking shears and just trim the seam allowance from double notch all the way up around the point. So making sure to leave a little bit at the point, but try to get a lot of that bulk out the way all the way down around the point to the double notch again. Now, before we turn this out, what we're now going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and catch that shoulder seam. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is, remember, this is kind of opened up. So we're gonna kind of invert this in a little bit more so that we have the shoulder seam of the outside to the shoulder seam of the inside. And basically, matching notches, basically just doing another burrito. And all the collar and everything, we're just kind of tossing on the inside. And literally, we're just kind of going to hit these two collar edges. And it might take, it might feel a little bit awkward, but we're gonna do just like this. We're going to um, go ahead and take this to the, we're gonna pin it first, and then we're going to sew these two edges down, and then we'll be able to turn the shirt out and give it a good press on both sides. So once we have stitched our shoulder seams on either side, what we can do is basically start to turn out our shirt like any other burrito method. And what's great about this is that basically because of the way that it was put together, you see that everything, all of your shoulder seams there and everything are encased. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, go ahead and make sure that you're like pushing out your collar points and everything like that. Give it a good press. Then we will take um, the fronts and we are going to edge stitch them. So we are going to um, take the seam allowance and press it towards the facing and an edge stitch along that facing all the way up to the double notch on either side. Then you will have basically the body of your garment. From here, if you wanted to um, put your sleeves together in the, or put your sleeves in in the round, you can go ahead and sew up the side seams. I like to sew in my sleeves flat, so I am going to wait on that process and going to start working on the sleeves now. So to start with the sleeve, we're gonna start by putting on the placket um, that would then be connected to the cuff. So to do that, we are going to put the sleeve fabric right size down on the table, and then we are going to put the placket piece right sides down on top of um, the sleeve. So this will be right side of the placket to wrong side of the sleeve. Then you will go ahead and stitch on your stitching lines so that you can then uh, slit this open to make your placket. What I have done here is I've used a heat erasable marker just to mark my stitching lines out so I can make sure that I get a good crisp box. So I'm gonna take this to my machine, sew this up, and then we'll be back. All right, so after you have sewn that box, you go ahead and slit, um, finish that slit all the way to the top but not all the way, of course. What you do is you go ahead and make a little uh, y, y cut there so that we can then flip this to the other side. And 
we're going to give that a press. So we're going to take this and press it open. And then we'll go ahead and continue working on the placket. So once pressed to the right side of the sleeve, I go ahead and turn under um, 3 eighths of an inch. Um, the pattern piece actually does specify this on the pattern piece. So if you have any questions on the seam allowance here, um, definitely check your pattern piece. But on the out outside edge of the plaque piece, I fold under 3 eighths of an inch. Then I fold it in half, covering that first line of stitching. This creates your under lap of your placket piece. On the other side, what I then do is press everything towards over top of that. Fold under 3 eighths of an inch as well as on the top. And then to make sure we get that covering that overlap. And then I then press it again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to my machine and we'll start with the underlap first and we're going to stitch up um, securing this piece. Then from here, what I will do is go. Usually I start from the bottom, go all the way up, over, down, making sure to catch a bit of that underlap just so that everything is in case and there's no raw edges showing. So once you're done with this, you'll do this to both sleeves and then we can work on installing the sleeves to our shirt. And now that the plackets for the sleeves are done, I'm going to install my sleeves flat. So I am going to lay my sleeve on top of my shirt, right sides facing together, matching up my notches as well as my dots. For my dots, I just made little small clips in there just so that I can um, keep an eye on where they are. Um, and sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then go back and sew within that seam allowance again around a quarter of an inch from that initial um, seam. You can also um, like sew this and take it to your serger just to finish the edges. Do this to both sides. So once the sleeve is sewn on, I go ahead and close up the sleeve as well as the side seam in one fell swoop. Um, you can do this just with your regular straight stitch, um, deciding how you want to finish the edge of the fabric the way that you want to. I'll be using my serger. Um, once you do that, go ahead and give this a press, pressing the seam allowance towards the back of the shirt. To begin on the cuff of the long sleeve shirt, what you're going to do is you are going to take your cuff facing piece. So this is your uninterfaced piece and you are going to fold down the seam allowance on the top notched edge, five eighths of an inch and trim that down to three eighths of an inch. Once you have done that, you can lay it on top of your interface piece and you're going to sew that around, leaving the notched edge open. So sew it around this way, five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can then go ahead and trim your corners turn and turn it out, making sure that this folded in edge is still um, in place and open. So now that you have gone ahead and pressed out your cuff, you're going to go ahead and, and um, pin it to your sleeve with the inner side, um, outside facing, right sides facing together, like with the inner facing, facing the actual sleeve part. Now you will notice on the sleeve that there are two pleats that I had not gone ahead and basted or anything. I like to wait on that to this point, just in case I have to make any adjustment to those pleats, just so they can fit my arm. Um, sometimes, you know, if your seam allowance is not perfect on your cuff, you might want to either make the pleats a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. So these two pins here or pinning in those pleats, and I matched up my notch. And then at the end of either side is the dot matching up with the placket. So we're gonna take that and sew it. So once you have sewn your cuff in place, make sure that you um, press the seam allowance down towards the cuff itself and go ahead and pin the cuff facing in place. I pin it from the front side as I'm going to edge stitch from the front to secure it. Do that to both cuffs. Then after that, you will go ahead and do the hem of the shirt as well as the buttonholes and you have a completed shirt. And now we have completed view A 
of ME 2018 by Nomi Patterns. I really hope that you enjoyed yourself with the sew along. I know I surely did. And I'm glad to have a shirt that reflects the vintage style that I love in my closet that fits me. Um, please, if you make this, I would love to see what you make. Please feel free to share it um, using the hashtag Nomi Patterns or hashtag ME2018 or just tag me, Julian Creates, on all platforms. I would love to see what you make and I hope you keep creating. Till next time.